the study shows that you can use um, a special device that we have made uh, and special media that allows to grow natural mouse embryos. So use the same system and we can put stem cells that are grown in the dish for many a long time. We can put them in these conditions and they self-organize alone over eight days into a whole embryo. We'll be focusing on taking stem cells, uh, skin cells from a patient. Let's say I'm a patient, I need uh, liver cells. And take a biopsy, make stem cells in the dish, grow them in special condition, and put them in this device for about 20 days. And they will make organized structure, which we call synthetic embryos. And these, they have cell progenitors, including liver progenitors or blood progenitors. And we can take these cells, maybe, and transplant them back to the patient. Hi there, everyone. This is Dan Dix here reporting for Press for Truth. And yes, you read that title correctly. Scientists have just successfully created the world's first synthetic embryo. We're talking about life forms being created in a petri dish without sperm without eggs without even the need for fertilization uh, this is quite quite remarkable so today we're going to take a, a close look at this um, scientists create world's first synthetic embryo researchers have created the world's first synthetic embryos in a groundbreaking feat that bypass the need for sperm, eggs, and fertilization. Scientists at the Weissman Institute in Israel found that stem cells from mice could be made to self-assemble into early embryo-like structures with an intestinal tract, the beginnings of a brain, and even a beating heart. Known as synthetic embryos, because they're created without fertilized eggs, the living structures are expected in the near term to drive deeper understanding of how organs and tissues from uh, form during the development of natural embryos. And this is the paper that has just been released on this and the kind of lead researcher behind this, um, Professor Jacob Hanna, has already uh, admitted that this is currently being tested in mice, but the overall goal here is to eventually move into human experimentation, and he's already formed a company to do just that, as we see here, Renewal Bio. The problem, he says, is that humanity is getting older and sicker, and the solution is a bio platform to renew human health. Of course, we already know that there are laws that have already been put in place when it comes to giving, you know, scientists the ability, the ability to create human life, um, as we see here, in the Human Fertilization and Embryology Act of 2008 would essentially make it illegal to do that. But you'll see there's a, an update here. As of today, August 8th, 2022, there are changes that may be brought into force at a future date. And uh, that is because this particular law doesn't reference synthetic embryos, which is the new thing, which is uh, going to have to be addressed and the law is going to have to be updated moving forward. So we're going to talk about all of that, guys, and much, much more in this video. Uh, but before we do, I'd ask that you check me out at pressfortruth.ca slash donate. Real quick, here's where you can do a one-time donation with PayPal. You can do Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies. You could also join me on Subscribestar, or you could sign up right here for a reincurring contribution. You could also send an e-transfer to dan at pressfortruth.ca, or you can send stuff to my P.O. box, guys, as well. Links for all of that are located in the description below. Thank you so much to anybody who does contribute to my efforts here at Press for Truth. All right, guys, this is a pretty wild topic, and I have a lot to say about it. So let's first uh, jump into this article, but I, I think you kind of get the gist of where we're at today um, with synthetic embryos. You know, I kind of brought you up to speed with that video in the beginning and a little bit off the top of that article. Um, I will include links to all this in the description below so you can, you know, check it out further for yourself. But I want to get into the, the real crux of it here. 
uh, where it says here, while most of the stem cells failed to form embryo-like structures, about 0.5% combined into little balls that grew distinct tissues and organs. When compared with natural mouse embryos, the synthetic embryos were 95% the same in terms of their internal structure and genetic profiles of the cells. As far as the scientists could tell, the organs that formed were functional. Hannah said that synthetic embryos were not real embryos and did not have the potential to develop into live animals, or at least they hadn't when they had been transplanted into the wombs of female mice. He has founded a company called Renewal Bio that aims to grow human synthetic embryos to provide tissues and cells for medical conditions. In Israel and many other countries, such as the US and the UK, it is legal, and we have ethical approval to do this with human-induced pluripotent stem cells. This is providing an ethical and technical alternative to the use of embryos, Hannah said. And Dr. James Briscoe, a principal group leader at the Francis Crick Institute in London, who was not involved in the research, said it was important to discuss how best to regulate the work before human synthetic embryos were developed. Synthetic human embryos are not an immediate prospect. We know less about human embryos than mouse embryos, and the inefficiency of the mouse synthetic embryos suggests that translating the findings to human requires further development. But he added, now is a good time to consider the best legal and ethical framework to reg regulate research and to use uh, use of human synthetic embryos and to update the current regulations. Speaking to Stats News, Professor Paul Tazers, a geneticist at Case Western Reserve University, said, the more scientists push stem cell-derived embryos further and further along the path of development, the more the synthetic and natural embryos will begin to merge. There will always be a gray area, he said. But as scientists and as a society, we need to come together to decide where the line is and define what is uh, ethically acceptable. The creation of synthetic human embryos is outside of the legal frameworks of the UK's Human Fertilization and Embryology Act, but it would be unlawful to use them to establish a pregnancy in women because they are not classified as permitted embryos. Imagine that. There's such a thing as a classification of what embryos are permitted and not. And so it looks like uh, they are already working to change the laws to... Uh, give them the ability to uh, to do this and it's clearly moving into the use in in, in human beings um, the man has already developed this this company renewal bio and let's once again take a look at what he sees as the problem and i'll discuss that and what the solution is as well and we'll get into my ideas of that as well so as we see here renewal bio the problem humanity is getting older and sicker and the solution is a bio platform to renew human health. Well, here's the issue that I have, folks. And please bear with me as I, uh, you know, talk about this very, very important stuff. But he is right. Human beings are getting sicker. In fact, the second law of thermodynamics is essentially uh, saying that all things in the universe tend towards chaos and disorder. Uh, everything is getting worse. Everything dies. Everything decays. We know this I intuitively. We, we see it in life all around us. We get older and we die. Everything that we see uh, and, and touch essentially d decays and gets worse and descends into chaos when left on its own. You can see this in the, in, the, in the macro and the micro. You know, from the scientists who first started discovering this and thinking about this, he was looking at, you know, his cup of coffee and as the steam was leaving the cup, he's thinking to himself, where, where, where does it go? What, what happens to it? And then he noticed that the heat in a human body, for example, when it comes into close contact with another one who might be colder than it, the heat will always dissipate into the colder body, not the, not the other way around. Um, if you if you want the heat to go from the colder body to the warmer body, you have to you have to Im import uh, external factors like uh, some sort of a machine, like a heater you could plug in. So uh, unless attended to, 
the natural order of things is that they descend into chaos and disorder. And again, like I said, we can see this in all things in life, all around us, you know, the things like, you know, you watch a flower grow and reach its climax and then and then die. But you can you can scale back here and, and see it in many other ways in life, like look at relationships or businesses. If left unattended and no work is put in, left to its own, they will descend into disorder and chaos. You know, and you can even pull back even further. Uh, Professor Carol Quigley uh, once wrote a book that I read called The Evolution of Civilizations, and he, he essentially was able to pinpoint it down to seven different stages that civilizations go through. Um, and, and it's a pattern uh, that repeats itself. Uh, and those were first uh, mixture, then gestation, then expansion, then conflict, then universal empire. After that comes decay and then eventually invasion. And the process then repeats itself over and over again. And you can continue to scale back and look at the entirety of the universe is in decay. The sun is, is burning out. You know, this is something that we all instinctively, intuitively, we know deep down inside that, that th th this is really what's happening. Now, here's the issue. This second law of thermodynamics, entropy, and the truth that all things are getting worse and are decaying is in direct contrast to the theory of evolution, which would state that things are getting better through natural selection with the implement of, of time and billions of years over time things are slowly but surely getting better and that is in direct contrast to what we know to be true when it comes to how everything is getting worse and, and declining um, there's a certain sense of cognitive dissonance that is happening happening there in the minds of of these scientists who fail to see this and who clearly believe the scientific impossibility that nothing created everything. And if that's the position that you are coming from, that nothing created everything, then you're probably not going to have, you know, an issue with these types of experiments. But if you are of the understanding, as I am, that we are creations created by a creator, you're going to see this as an absolute slap in the face to God. Because look, we know that when you see a building, it's proof that there's a builder. I mean, <laughs> buildings don't build themselves. Everybody knows that. It's just like if you look at a, a painting, you know with scientific proof that a painter had to exist. Paintings don't just create themselves. The very painting itself is proof that there is a painter. And it goes the same for creation. The, the 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 very creation is proof of a creator you look at the majesty of the universe the 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 sun and the moon and the stars the sun any closer and we're completely fried any further away and we're frozen to death but it's just right so as to perfectly ripen your tomatoes you think about all the the seasons and the the majesty of the human eyeball I mean, we're talking hundreds of millions of light sensors and muscles going off thousands of time a second to do the function that it was designed to do, to think that that is something that can happen to have evolved over billions of years through a mixture of chance and, and lucky circumstances is absolutely not only uh, ludicrous, but I think it's dishonest and, and it's delusional because as I said, we all understand entropy to be what it truly is. The natural order of things is to descend into, into chaos. We will all return to dust one day. That is just a fact. So when he looks at the problem being something that you can't fix anyways and the solution being a bio uh, solution, I have to I have to expose that for for what it is because if you are going to come to the realization that we have been created by a creator then you might start to think about well what does he think about death 
What does the Bible say about death? And I know I'm bringing up the big bad B word now amongst my audience. It is the world's most popular selling book. If you're completely dismissing it outright, you are doing yourself a disservice. And what it says about death, uh, it tells us what it is and also how to defeat it. And according to the Bible, death is wages. You may have heard the famous Bible verse, the wages of sin is death. So in other words, we are being paid in death for our sin. Just like if a, a criminal who killed, you know, a couple of prostitutes doesn't really see the seriousness of his crime. And he's like, yeah, judge, I mean, I did the world a favor. They were prostitutes, they were scum of the earth. <laughs> I did the world a favor. And he's gonna say, no, I, I'm gonna show you just how serious what you did are. You're getting the lecture chair, you're going to life. That's what's due to you. That's what's, I'm paying you. That's what you've earned. And the creator of this universe is so serious about sin that he has also uh, paid us in death for the sinful lives that we have inherited. Um, now, obviously, the creator of this universe did provide a way in which guilty sinners would not have to experience death, but could have quite literally eternal life. But again, if you're coming from the position that we've evolved from some sort of toxic soup from the ocean and we have a natural ancestry with rocks and, and pineapples for that matter, um, you won't have any kind of a problem playing around with the very fundamental basics of human life in the, in the, in the face of, of our creator. So I hope you guys can see this uh, for what it is. Scary times indeed. And as I said, the Lord did provide a an option for how you can defeat death and this is when the cross comes into the picture and uh, where where you know the Lord gave his son Christ as as a as as a, a sacrifice for the sins of the world. And if this is the first time you're hearing me talk about this guys, I, I think we should talk about it a lot more in more detail uh, moving forward because I, I think it really is the big picture. Um, we are engaged in spiritual warfare and um, when I see stories like scientists developing apparently human life in a petri dish, uh, th this this certainly has, has me concerned. Obviously some people are going to think there are lots of good applications that could come from this and potentially um, there is in the, in the field of medicine, but this is a dangerous slippery slope and again it's showing how people are not only identifying the incorrect problem but they're also looking to the incorrect solution for all of this so what do you think about the contradiction of entropy versus evolution and the fact that all things are getting worse all things are decaying everything will eventually die where evolution theory explains the exact opposite, that through natural selection and with enough time, things are getting better. How do you reconcile that difference? Let me know in the comments section below and also what you think about this idea of scientists developing synthetic human life forms in a Petri dish. Do you think this is something that should be explored or something that uh, is turning out to be probably a pure evil, a slap in the face of God. Let me know what you guys think in the description, in the comments section below. Also, don't forget to check the description, whether you're watching this on BitChute or Odyssey or Mines or Float or Bastion, maybe you're even watching this on YouTube, wherever you happen to be viewing this video, please check the links in the description for all the sources to this, so you can check it out for yourself. Um, but also links to where you can support my efforts moving forward here at Press for Truth. And that's all for today, guys. Just wanted to bring all that to your attention. Once again, um, thank you for tuning in. Don't forget to click that thumbs up button. And stay tuned. I'm going to have more video reports coming soon. This is Dan Dix reporting for Press for Truth. We all want truth. truth. The truth will set you free. free, free.